University in Wichita Falls, Texas. And that was the first etude for clarinet uh, for the ATSSB All-State Auditions for the 2017-2018 school year. This is a really relatively short etude, but there are a lot of things that you need to keep in mind. While this might be considered the traditional slow etude, you guys are probably well aware at this point by looking at it that there's a lot of technique involved. Um, and there are a lot of little um, kinds of uh, traps in this, in this short selection from the etude. But here are just a few things to think about for this. Now, first of all, when you're looking in the first measure, one of the things that people often ask me, when you see a staccato dot underneath a legato line, a legato phrase marking, what does that mean? Um, that's actually a, a articulation marking taken from the string world uh, called a portato. That when a string player sees that, they would leave their bow against the string and they would just change direction. Da, 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 da. So there's a little bit of separation, but overall the effect is still legato. So you need to think the same way when you're playing that. Now, perhaps one of the biggest things about this whole piece is there are a lot of dynamics all over the place. You have forte down to piano, down to pianissimo, um, and you need to take full advantage of all of that. Now, some people may advise you to work with the technique and then add dynamics, but I don't think that ever works effectively. Whenever I hear that from a performer, it's very obvious. Um, the dynamic contrast is very shallow. There isn't a lot going on. I think it's better if you just bake that in from the beginning of your practice. Um, that you take a look at the dynamics, that you practice slowly enough where you can perform the rhythms and the pitches accurately along with the articulations, the dynamics, um, all of the aspects of the music you need to be practicing from the beginning. With this piece, there are some technical aspects to think about, but if you practice slowly from the very beginning, you'll be fine. Now, unlike some slow etudes, if you've done uh, all state auditions on clarinet before, uh, you may have noticed before that, um, that they make you count the eighth note. They're not making you do this here. Your goal tempo is quarter note equals 58. But I would advise you as you're working on this, that you would start slowly enough where you have to count the eighth note. Uh, maybe start um, the eighth note equals 58, or maybe even lower um, uh, for absolute accuracy, and especially in those 32nd lines that you have through this piece, and the 16th triplets that you have through this piece. There isn't a really good way of counting that uh, when we're counting the quarter note in this piece. So if you count the eighth note, it's going to make counting, it's going to make um, digging into these rhythms a lot easier, a lot more intuitive for you. And then if you continue to count the eighth note, your final tempo is just going to be 116 to the eighth note, really not that fast at all. And it's going to make everything much more approachable, much more understandable. Uh, one final word in this piece. Um, some of these trills, uh, I, I hear all the time people going breakneck speed on trills. <laughs> You don't want to do that. A trill is a musical device to increase intensity through a line. You want to approach it as such. So normally, you probably notice I started the trill a little bit slower, and I had a moment at the end of that note where it was just enough before I moved on. You don't have to continue the trill all the way through the pitch. You need a breathe space. You need just a little bit of time to establish what the original note was before you move on. Be more relaxed in your approach. Again, listen to the way that I did it. Hopefully it's going to help you in your pacing. Uh, I know I said one final thing, but one actual final thing. There are a couple uh, instances in this piece where you need to think about your pinkies, um, about what pinky keys you're going to use. And I would say the biggest one to think about is, um, is the next to the last bar, uh, the next to the last full bar. Uh, you have in beats three and beats four, you have 16 triplets. I would make sure that when you have Bs there, that you would play those on the right hand side, it's gonna make sure that you're setting yourself up well for the C sharp towards the end of that bar. So with these few thoughts, I hope that you all have a great deal of success working this piece up. Remember, the whole goal of this is not to win, the whole goal of this is to make yourself a better musician, a better clarinetist. So make sure that you're practicing other materials along with this, and make sure that you're growing uh, all together. If you can just play this and you can't play anything else, we kind of missed the point of that. But if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, please get a hold of me, andrew.allen at mwsu.edu. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you, and I wish you good luck.